what do you think is going on in the United States? Why, why are we seeing these images? In the U.S., we've had a problem of race, of mistreatment of African Americans. Since the beginning of the founding of the country, the first slave ships arrived here in 1619. That's the year before the, the pilgrims came from England to settle Massachusetts Bay Colony, where I live uh, now. And um, you think about our civil war fought over slavery. Uh, our greatest, I think, American of the last 100 years is Martin Luther King Jr. He fought battles, peaceful, nonviolent battles. His, of course, you know his um, his idol, his spiritual idol was Mahatma Gandhi. Yes, he modeled his movement after the Gandhi movement to liberate India from British rule. The peaceful nonviolence. King led us to become a better country. We elected an African American president, Barack Obama, a man I deeply respect. And yet you see race come back now. You see African Americans mistreated this horrible, horrible murder of George Floyd, this young African American man by police in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have millions of Americans trying to protest peacefully, as is our right, as is your right in India. And yet the president treats them all like terrorists. In many ways, India and the United States share many, many traits. Uh, we were both subjects of the British Empire. We both liberated ourselves from that empire in different centuries, but we did. Um, you are this, ex I mean, I've always admired India. I've always admired the multiracial, multi-religious aspect of Indian society. And so um, countries sometimes have to go through a discussion and a political debate about who, we, who are we? At, at the core, what kind of nation are we? We're an immigrant nation. We're a tolerant nation. I mean, I think the thing we share, and I think why our partnership works, is because we are tolerant systems. You mentioned that you're an immigrant nation. We are a very, very tolerant nation. Our DNA is supposed to be tolerant. We're supposed to accept new ideas. We're supposed to be open. But the surprising thing is that that open DNA is sort of disappeared. I mean, I say this with sadness that I don't see that level of tolerance that I used to see. I don't see it in the United States and I don't see it in India. I think you've identified a central issue, at least for, for, the, for the United States. Um, and, and, and the silver lining here, the good news is that we have people demonstrating all across the country in every major city in the United States this week, peacefully, on behalf of tolerance, inclusion, minority rights, all these essential issues at the core of our democracy. And I think one advantage is that we democracies have, say, over an authoritarian country like China, is that we can correct ourselves as a self-corrective part of our national DNA in India and the United States. And as all democracies, we resolve this at the ballot box in free and fair elections. We do not turn to violence. We do this peacefully. That's the India tradition that we love about India from your founding yeah. in the 1930s, the protest movement, the Salt March, all the way to 1947 and 48. So I take rule that in, I can't comment on your country because I don't know it nearly as well, obviously, but my country, I think, will be back. We'll be back. We'll strengthen our democracy. But I, I feel that this division which occurs is actually tremendously weakening for the country. But the people who do the division portray it as the strength of the country. When you divide uh, African Americans, uh, Mexicans, um, and other people in the United States, or you divide Hindus and Muslims and Sikhs in India, you're weakening the structure of the country. But then the same people who weaken the structure of the country say that they're the nationalists. Well, I think that's, I mean, that's what President Trump is all about. He wraps himself in a flag. He declares that he alone can fix the problems. I must say, I think President Trump is in many ways an authoritarian personality. Um, but in our country, you're seeing the institutions remain strong. Mm -hmm. The military clearly saying over the last few days, individual senior military leaders, we will not put American military troops onto the streets. That's the function of the police forces, not the military force. We'll abide by the Constitution. The senior military officer, General Mark Milley, said this week, Americans have a right to protest. They have a right to stay, to disagree with the government. These are so fundamental. You, it's extraordinary we have to even debate these. So we're back to debating first principles. 
Um, but again, I, I do see strengths that democracies go through trials. We play out our differences in political campaigns or in street protests, but at least we can do that. You can see authoritarianism coming back in China, in Russia, and we democracies, um, we, we sometimes go through painful episodes because of our freedoms, but we're so much stronger because of them. That's our advantage, I think, inherently over the authoritarian countries.